Guido Luzzi. Oh, Guido Luzzi. Sean, even though a baseball season is 162 games, a one and three game losing a one to three game losing streak is not insignificant. Every season there's teams that miss the playoffs by one to five games. Sometimes teams in a division can even tie and lose the tiebreaker for the division. For example, the 2005. Okay, listen. I, I get what you're saying. Are there times where one game is significant? Of course. If they played 100,000 games, there would be instances where a couple of the top teams were separated by two or three games. Okay? It's just the law of averages. What I'm saying is generally the significance of a 16 of one game in a 17-game season far outweighs one game or two games in a 162-game season. Not to unless, mention, how do you have a job and watch 162 anythings? Unless you're Tampa Bay and you're <laughs> seven and nine and ahead of this, the oh the, uh, the, the box, south. yeah. <laughs> That's you just getting a shit division. Wow. Oh, I just don't get. It. That was my baseball rant where I was talking about the uh, there being too many. Games. I actually saw something on uh, one of the I don't know it was a, a Google feed or whatever it was, and they were talking to Deion Sanders, and he said. That Major League Baseball was a, a more difficult uh, endeavor than the NFL. How? I didn't read it. Oh. I just wanted to throw it out there. Maybe somebody somebody can research that, and, mm-hmm. and maybe next week they can have a uh, a reason. Um, there's a lot of standing around, too, if you look at a baseball game. Next time, during the baseball season, in that short time where there's overlap of football and baseball, right, September, October, watch a football game for 15 minutes and then click immediately over to the baseball game. Every, everything will cr- everything crashes. Wherever your endorphins are at that time will crash There'll be a shot of the the 15 minutes between pitches. George Carlin did a great bit about how you can speed baseball. One swing, fuck you, sit down, you're out. That's it. Yeah, wiffle ball. One randomly placed landmines in the outfield. A lot of ways to spruce that sport up. I just can't watch it. Guido Luzzi, you can. And at the same time, like UFC... Sometimes when I watch like late at night and I watch the like the best of UFC and it's these incredible fights and I I and I didn't watch it in the first you know when it, when it first played I guess that's stuttering right because I'm trying to think about what I'm going to say <laughs> <clears throat> so that's I, that's my that's my CTE because I don't know what the fuck the, the, the what I'm going to say because this just came up but um so I'm watching a fight that I've never watched before, but it's best of. So it's like just a barn burner of a fight. And these guys, it's just, I, all of a sudden I feel like my chest gets tight. I know my blood pressure is going through the roof. I'm like, why am I watching this? Yeah. Like I've got to go to bed. I'm getting all hyped up. And I remember me and my son used to have, uh, uh, maybe it was Mike Tyson boxing or one of these, but you had to you had to pound on the uh, on the controller pad, punch like, out Mike Tyson's punch out. It was yeah, called. and like yeah. and he had Marciano was like my son would always pick he would pick uh, Rocky Marciano, and he would and I would always like build a guy to be me. I'd be a, some palooka, and my son would beat the shit out of me. I could never in, in between rounds you you know you'd you'd have the guy with the ice bag and the the cut stick working on you, trying to come back out, and finally one night I was I, I was doing a movie somewhere, and I was uh, I brought the, the PlayStation, I brought that game with me, and I built a fighter, and I, I like went through camp and did all this shit, and I that that fighter became the world champion, and uh, is that the game? That's yeah, I think it, yeah, it is Marciano think it's, uh, actually yeah. that was. Fight night. It was. Yeah, good. yeah. That was a good. That was a good game. Um, Lou Marciano had a gym not far from me here, um, and uh, it was like the what was that Polish fighter's name? Andrew Galata. That was like his training place. So I was doing a script with somebody. So we got access to uh, 
to Marciano's gym. And you just kind of let us have the reign of the place, hang out, get the feel, watch guys, whatever. And I was talking to Lou during downtime, it, Rocky's brother, uh, which you might have deduced on your own if you don't have CTE. Um, and Lou said about his brother, he he was always disappointed that he was not a baseball player. He wanted to be a baseball player. That was his dream more than anything else. And he ends up being, see, it just shows we're never happy, right? You should be satisfied having a, the most successful podcast. Look at my hands. His small hands. Look at my hands. I'm never, I'm never going to fight Joe Lewis. <laughs> you do the dinero. Give me a little That's bit. A, well, there's a question later related to that, so you're going to have to wait for okay. that. I, I guess I'm kind of in a, in a corner in, a, in, a, in, in some – I could put the gloves on maybe. No, you look, look more like, like – in a robe. You look like, more like uh, the, the fight doctor, Bernie Pacheco. Bernie <laughs> Freddie Pacheco. Uh, Freddie, Bernie, whatever the fuck. That's a long time ago. For us CTE guys, that was... <laughs> My favorite ref was Mills Lane. Whatever happened to Mills? Oh, yeah, Mills Lane. Come out fighting. Remember he had like a show where he was like the, like Judge Judy. Oh, you're kidding. No, he, yeah, like Mills Lane was like, he was like Judge Judy. Is he a judge? Was he Judge Mill? Look at this, Judge Mills Lane. Was he a, was he an actual certified judge? I don't know. He said he was a tailor. He kept hit me with uh, some deep deep inseam measurements. Good lord! See, that's just a bastardization. It is no. He could have maintained being entertaining. He was entertaining in the ring. Here he is. I guess. What year was that? Ninety. What did it say? Ninety six. Okay. I missed it. I was I busy. Yeah. I was on the road after 300 days a year, and I knew what the fuck was. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it existed. You spent a lot of time fucking around in hotel rooms, and that's the reason you ran into yeah. Judge Mills Lane. 700 episodes. Wow. We have a lot to live up to. Judge Mills Lane made it to... Well, he had advertisers that paid. Um, oh! Tez low, Mission Plex. Low blow. Go ahead. Take eight seconds. Get your wind. The B <laughs> Taz Mission Plex, the B. Arthur Woman of the Year Award. Wow, what an honor it will be for whoever wins that award. Screw the Emmy Award and Grammy Awards. The real market. Should we should we just go Arthur. to it right now? No, we'll do that. We'll do the whole okay, thing. Okay, okay. Maybe the, we'll do we'll do a song and maybe you can do a, a performance. I'll forget award. with my CTE. I'm going to forget where forget we're the at. Lyrics. <laughs> We'll bring it up on the screen like they all have today. Guido Luzzi, a second question. I think I love the name Guido Luzzi this week. I think the Joe Rogan podcast is fantastic, but I rarely watch it. However, I have seen every minute of every episode of this podcast, and I basically never even saw Kevin wrestle. So this means you're a product beyond sports. You're a, you're, you're a, you're a podcast product now. You're a podcast entity that people would pay high High guaranteed money for television, radio, podcasts. The inbox is full of them. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, there's beautiful women in every room. I'm dressed like Hef and I'm beating off every week. I'm standing here beating my meat and I got a room full of broads. That's how I feel today. I feel like I got a room, for a mansion full of broads and I'm in a bathroom trying to pump one out to a 1975 issue. Full bush. Gotta calm down. 